Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create preference toolbars in Reaper. Now, the purpose of this video is to highlight the unique function that the toolbars have in Reaper, and that it gives us a visual representation of what state we're in at all times. So while there are hundreds of preferences or options in Reaper, there might only be a few that matter to you. We're going to set up a bunch of custom toolbar buttons to allow us to always know what state or mode we're in. Hopefully this will inspire you to create more of these on your own. So if we start with the default toolbar, Reaper already has a bunch of buttons that serve this function. For example, this button right here is for locking. So if we choose it and try to move our items, they don't move because they're locked. And we could see that because this button is selected. If we deselect it and move our items, we can then move them. And we can see that because this button is deselected. So it gives us visual feedback as to what mode or what state we're in. And it's the same way for snapping, our grid, item grouping, and auto crossfades. But we can create our own to do similar things. For example, let's say I'm recording some audio right here. And now I want to punch in in this section. I'll create a time selection and just punch it in. And we can see by default that Reaper created another take. Take one and now take two. And if we punch in again, Reaper creates a third take, which we can choose the best take from. But if we don't want to create takes, let's undo this. We can switch the mode by going to the options menu and choosing new recording that overlaps existing media items and change it from creating new takes by default to tape mode, which is going to trim our items or record on top of the old ones. So let's switch it to this mode and do the same punch. And now Reaper recorded on top of the other item without creating new takes. Let's try it again. Reaper didn't create a new take. It just recorded on top of the old one. So if we prefer this mode at certain times, we might want to create a custom toolbar to see which mode we're in and also change it. So let's undo this. And let's right click over here and choose Customize Toolbar. Here we can customize this toolbar to change the buttons for our own purposes. To make room for some custom ones, let's delete a few we don't need, like Undo and Redo and also save project, as we can use keyboard shortcuts or the menu to trigger those. Then we'll go down here and right click. And I'm going to insert a separator so we can separate the default toolbars from the custom ones we're going to create. So let's right click and insert an action. Let's type in the filter, new recording. Then right down over here is the default behavior creating new takes and tape mode. Let's choose them both. Hit return or enter. And that adds them both down here, creating toolbar buttons as well. Let's add some custom icons to them. For the takes one, change icon. I'm going to choose this button right here, which looks like a record button and some takes. And then for this one, the tape mode, change icon. I'm going to choose this record button with the reel to reel tape machine in it. So now they look like this for takes and for tape mode. Let's save it. And now they show up over here. And choosing one deselects the other. So we can always see what mode we're in creating takes or tape mode. So let's try that punch again. 
And now we can see Reaper's creating some takes. But if we don't want that mode, just change it to tape mode instead. And we can see what mode we're in right here. So now if we punch in in this audio, it's not going to create takes. So very quickly, we can see what mode we're in and just choose it from here for takes or tape mode. So let's record another piece of audio. And notice by default, Reaper created a fade in in the beginning and a fade out at the end. And if we do some punching, Reaper created a crossfade on the punch in and a crossfade on the punch out. This is by default and it's set up in the preferences right over here. Create automatic fade in and fade out for new items. And this is very useful for recording new items, but there are times we want to turn it off. Let's say we're importing a drum loop. Let's go to my hard drive and drag a drum loop in and drop it. And we can see by default, Reaper's going to create a fade in in the beginning, which is going to cut off the beginning of the loop. So in this situation, we probably want to turn off this preference. So let's create a custom toolbar to do that for us. Let's right click, customize toolbar. Let's create another separator, insert an action, and let's search fade in. And here we could choose this action, which is going to toggle enabling and disabling our fade in and fade out. Let's right click it, change the icon, and let's choose this icon right here. It doesn't matter which icon you choose, I'm just choosing a bunch of random ones. Let's save it. Now this icon shows up. So if we leave it on and record some audio, it automatically fades in the beginning and the end and a punch. It creates a crossfade on the punch in and punch out. But if we don't want that behavior, when we drag in our loop, just turn it off right here. And we can see that that preference is off. So when we drag in this loop, it's not going to have a fade in in the beginning or a fade out at the end. And this can also be used for splitting our items. If we turn this preference on, type S, it splits our item, but puts a fade out and a fade in right at the split. Do another one and another one, creates a fade out and a fade in on that split. But if we don't want that behavior, just turn it off right here. And now it splits our items, but it doesn't create a fade in or a fade out. We could also create a crossfade at our splits. This option right here is off by default, but if we choose it, it can create a crossfade at our splits. But instead of doing it, let's add another custom toolbar button for this preference. Right click, customize toolbar, insert action, and let's search crossfade split, choose this action right here, toggle auto crossfade on split, that creates a button right here. Let's add an icon. I'm going to choose this one right here that looks like a scissor. Save it. And it shows up right here. So now, if I turn this off and turn this one on, and we split our items, it creates a fade out and a fade in. But if we turn it off, it just splits our items. No fade ins or fade outs. But if we turn this option on, 
Now it creates a crossfade at that split. So we can choose any type we want, right with our toolbar buttons. No fades, fade in and fade out, or crossfade at the split. And we can see it all visually right from here. Now another mode that I use quite often, let's duplicate this kick, one here and one here. If we turn off auto crossfade right here, and drag this item onto this one, by default, they're gonna mix. So we're gonna hear both of them at the same time. Drag this one over to here, same thing. We're gonna hear both at the same time. That's the default mode. But if we switch it in the options menu to trim content behind media items when editing, now, if I drag this one on top of this one, they don't mix. In fact, the second one is going to trim the first one. So if I let go, it trims the first item based on where we dropped it. Drag this one onto this one. They don't mix. This one trims this one, creating this gap right here. So if you're like me and you like to use both behaviors, we could switch it and see which mode we're in with a custom toolbar button. So let's right click, customize toolbar. Let's insert another separator here. Let's also move enable auto crossfade as it's related to this function. So move it over here so it's next to this new one. Right click, insert action. Let's search toggle trim. And that action is right here. Toggle trim behind items when editing. Let's choose this. Let's put it after our crossfades. But notice, Reaper already creates an icon for it. So let's just use this one. Save it. And they show up right here. So if auto crossfade is on, and we drag this over this one, it crossfades on both sides. But if we turn it off and blend them, they mix or they're gonna play at the same time. But if we wanna turn on trim content behind media items when editing, just turn it on right here. Now this item is gonna trim this one. If we drop it, it trimmed this item. And the same, if we drag this one over here and drop it, it trimmed this one. With the idea that we're only going to hear one item at a time. So it's very useful to see which mode we're in just by looking up here. Or a crossfade turned on or off and trim content behind media items when editing, or turn it off if we don't want that behavior. And there's one other preference I wanna show you. Let's play the track with the mixer open. We can see the levels of our tracks right here. Now by default, the level we're seeing is post fader. So if we grab a fader and pull it down, the meter also goes down. Or if we bring it up, it goes up. So what we're seeing on this meter is post fader. But there are times where you prefer to see pre fader metering. And we can choose that in the options menu. Go down here to pre fader track metering. And now these meters are based on what's on the track, not after the fader. So if we bring this down, it doesn't affect the metering because the metering is pre fader, but it can be hard to tell which mode we're in. So let's create a custom toolbar to change that. Right click, custom toolbar. Let's add another separator, insert action, type in pre fader, and this option shows up. Double click it, and it shows up down here. 
Let's give it an icon. I'm going to choose this one right here. Save it. And now it shows up up here. So if we want post fader metering, just leave it off. And now the fader affects the metering. Pull it down. We don't see our meters. But if we switch it to pre fader metering, we're going to see the metering no matter what, because the metering is pre fader. Switch it again to post fader, and it switches back. Let's bring up our faders so we can see it again pre fader or post fader. And we can always tell which mode or state we're in just by looking in our toolbar. So as you can tell, this is very helpful for seeing which preference we're using and switching them on the fly and knowing which mode or state we're in at all times. And like I said, there's so many more options or preferences you can choose, but hopefully this will inspire you to create your own. But for me, I find these very helpful. So that's pretty much it. That's how to create preference toolbars in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.